had to because in an hour you can't get 10 hours in. That would be independent invention. I, I should have explained that there's two concepts, two philosophies in archaeology and anthropology. One is independent invention, which they say everything uh, was. The other is is diffusion. Well, diffusion is like Christianity starting in one spot and diffusing throughout the world. Uh, the great pyramids on two continents. If you leave people alone, they say, well, eventually they'll develop pyramids. The question that we raise is, would they, de would they develop a Celtic cross with chevrons of the Glamorgan kings with an alphabet which didn't originate over here? A little hard to put together. Sure. That's our, and there are many of them found in, you bet, you bet. I, we're finding things that the archaeologists threw out. Yeah, go ahead. Well, that's, an over, that's over the top. We're talking 1886. They didn't carry the bones on with them. Mm. So. Even 1886, they were just Yeah. Yeah. Look, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Please do. I, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind. I don't difficulty at all in finding that our ancestors brought technology from Syria or brought it from Asia Minor. That doesn't bother me in the slightest. So transference of technology, of civilized techniques of language, is not a problem for me. And I, I see what you call my archaeological evidence. I'm not an archaeologist. Wait a minute. Well, I'm not an archaeologist. I'm not into archaeology. I'm into history. Go ahead. That's what it says. That's what it says. Where did the animals come from? What did they what? eat? They brought animals with them. Where did the animals come from? What did the Indians eat? Yeah. Okay, so what does anybody eat? What do the Indians eat? What does anybody do? I mean, if, if there's a migration, people plant crops, or they, they slaughter what animals they can catch in the woods and forests. They catch fish in the streams. They do what they always do. That's what happened when, it, in modern times, there was a Welsh migration to Patagonia. And they were landed on an inhospitable seashore without provisions. No provisions at all. And instead of going to a fertile land, they found themselves in the desert. But they survived. They survived and they lived off the land and they scratched up worms, but they lived. And that's what people do when they migrate anywhere. The story of Europe is one of vast migrations. And that's what people do. They migrate from one place to the other and they survive. Well, if you read the Walla Mola, you'll see how the Indians are saying a great race of white people came here, and they were too powerful for us to deal with. Now, are the Indians also telling lies? Because I don't think so. Because they describe these white men in some detail. They even say where they were. No, no, just a minute. No, just a minute, just a minute. When you read the evidence in the Welsh records, it says, Owen Vindee is buried at Lanhilleth. You go to Lanhilleth and always churches and mounds are in a relationship of the church and the mound is at the southwest corner, right? Always. You find a gigantic tomb mound. If you read, it's a Bedwyr at Pedrog is buried on the steep at Dindruffan, right? Dindruffan's a great fortress. Again, the thing is there. And every time they dig up, Bentley Guard. The village tradition was King Bentley's in the mound. Fine. And he's wearing a golden shirt. Well, you go to the British Museum, you'll see a golden shirt. They'll cover you from shoulders to waist, as they said. And every time these things are checked out, they turn out to be truthful and accurate. I don't find a problem with this. See, I don't take a polarized stance. When the idea of Arthur coming to America first dawned on us, we said, well, we better not tell anybody, we'll tell them. And they all think we're that stark baby mad. We've got enough trouble proving Arthur existed. You know, that's yeah, the first problem. What are the implications of people being here from time to time? What are the implications of how bad 
they were Gnostic Christians. Uh, Britain was Christianized in 36, first country to be Christianized, a little different than the Orthodox Christian. They had a Celtic cross, which nobody else had. The smeltered metal, which the American Indians, we are told in our archaeology, anthropology courses, the American Indians didn't smelter. A little hard to defend 30, excuse me, 29 percent zinc, 3 percent lead, and the rest copper on those bracelets that are tagged with mattock stone, found by archaeologists, taken and kept in custody of the Smithsonian Institute, doesn't appear in fantastic archaeology book. They can't touch it very well. So yeah, we've got smelted metal, we've got uh, crosses that sure look right, but buddy, when we put DNA on the stand, let somebody else put their DNA up there with it, because that's going to be pretty strong. The implications are, hell, there's going to be a lot of books that are going to have to be changed and a lot of, uh, a lot of things. It doesn't mean anything. They're not going to claim America. <laughs> they tried. They tried that. They tried that. Uh, yeah. But it didn't come up. Yeah. Okay. more of an observance from what was being said back there and from what I remember hearing as a child from my grandfather who's part Cherokee. He told me a story and I researched it when I was in high school about a little bird on the back of a large bird and it's a Welsh legend as well as a Cherokee legend. And I remember him telling us about it. We, we've got 20 or 30 more identically. The white buffalo and the druid pipe. Well, we've had our first stone. We expect many more. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Brother Bruce, what you're talking about is 1979. Arkansas archaeologists. Yes, yes. Yes. That's a survey of the same today. That's pretty uh, powerful. It's the medium yolk, and low yolk. So it's the same thing. Yeah. But nobody's looking, and nobody's listening. That's all we ask. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I would like to say that Alan Wilson has some of his uh, research books here, if any of you are interested in uh, purchasing tonight. In addition to that, I'm sure that both gentlemen would be happy to talk with you down front. Uh, we thank you very much for coming this evening. Jim Michael with the Ancient Kentucky Historical Association and <clears throat> we're affiliated with the with the uh, Confeder the Kentucky Confederation of Historical Associations. Today I'm recording a program for you that was presented in January of 1993 at Elizabethtown, Kentucky and uh, it's how the alphabet was lost. The alphabet that we're talking about is the Colburn alphabet, and it was found on a tablet at Grave Creek, which is Moundville, West Virginia, about 10 miles south of Wheeling, West Virginia.